That Buzz has a lot of nerve putting me on trial. What did I do that was so bad? I was just helping John from Arkansas win the potato crown. Why not give that crusty old Arkansinian some help? Buzz had it coming by taking my money and replacing it with Monopoly money. Maybe I should put him on trial. If he thinks I'm going to take this lane down, he's in for a big surprise. I see that he's ready to render his video. Let me just make a few changes while he's taking a nap. I'm going to need some cash for my defense. <laughs> Hello, YouTubers. Welcome, YouTubers, to part two of this 1950 Emerson radio. I was going to say the model, but I forgot it. <laughs> you are an old man and a fool! When last we left, uh, it wasn't working very well. Oh, brother. But uh, I noticed one of the wires on the uh, loop antenna was broken off, so let's just turn it on now and... Uh, See if it plays any better. Great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? I think that speaker's kind of uh it's rattling a little bit there. But here's what Myers said when he was asked uh, about Damien's comments about him needing to take it personal. They, the, the 10 spots, 12 went out the 10, they come back and they say, Get me an aspirin. Ford with an injury to his left foot in the Philadelphia 70s. I think that's a Russian station. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Oh my God. So the radio sounds a lot better. Uh, I'm going to check all the tubes, see if they've got any weak tubes, but uh, that speaker may be suspect on it. Today, I believe we're going to concentrate on the cabinet. I'm going to leave the uh, radio to a later episode. You seem kind of upset. This uh, radio is pretty dirty on top. I plan to... Uh, whoa, what's this? Uh -oh. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Get out of there. I plan to uh, take everything off and clean all this and uh, I may paint this. I gotta make this uh, project last a while because I sent the badge over to Radio Days like we talked about on the last episode and uh, it could take up to eight weeks for them to uh, get that done so So what? I'm going to have to spend a lot of time on this and get it looking like it was brand new. I'm gonna go through this with a fine tooth comb. This man is obviously a psychotic. Also in this episode, we're gonna fabricate one of these. This is a uh, screwdriver to adjust the uh, IF can. I don't understand it. There's something screwy about this. Although this works a little bit, it, this is so flimsy that you can hardly turn those. You pit on it. So I found a couple of these. Now these are some stylus, I think for a laptop when I was uh, fixing laptops. So don't go away, it looks to be like a, a pretty decent episode. That doesn't sound uh, to your liking, well then you just turn the video off. But for those who want to stick around, Get a cold drink and a snack, put your feet up. Enjoy. Well, I had to buy a new mic yesterday. Oh my gosh. And this is the one I bought. And we'll talk about this after I talk about the old one. Now, the mic I was using for the last couple years is this uh, Blue Yeti, they call it. It's heavy. And I've been having problems with this thing ever since I've got it. 
what happens is it kept uh, not being recognized and so uh, when it was new I contacted Yeti and they sent me a new USB cord you seem kind of upset and that worked for a while it seems to be the problem with this uh, mini USB connection here I actually ordered uh, one of these connectors you can buy them at DigiKey and so I replaced that and it worked great for like uh, almost a year then it started having the same problems so I replaced that again and it worked okay for a while yesterday it finally went out and I smelled something burnt in there so this has got some serious problems now if I could get the schematic for this I could probably fix it but you're not going to be able to find one the damn idiots they just want you to throw it away and buy a new one you know I'm sick of that uh, thinking you know there ought to be a law where you buy this and they send you the schematic for it so I'm gonna call up Trump and tell him get this uh, law passed you have to have a schematic when you order something it's really a bad situation it's really bad so I'll get off that rant okay now let's get this out of the way this is made by Samson and it's uh, a cool little looking thing it uh, is chrome plated it's sort of a a retro old type mic design cool that's why I wanted to get this it looks smart Here's the box. It's called a Meteor Mic. That's the model number. With noise canceling technology. That's a nice pile of junk you got there, my boy. Let's take a look at the box that came in. Comes with a, uh, a pouch. In case you need to travel. You just flip the legs up, stick it in the bag, and uh, get on the plane. I think that's cool. Now this thing, uh, the legs fold up. Let me see if I can try this with, it, with the mic live. Comes like that. I can't flip this leg up because of the USB cable here, but uh, see it folds up really nice. I think this is awfully exciting. These stand legs got little rubber feet on here. Watch out, boss, for that rubber! And this is adjustable. You can have it like that, or you can push it down like that. So it's tilting upwards so my voice can travel right to it. I'll let you be the judge on there. How does it sound? Well played, old man. Go. I thought it was uh, almost uh, comparable with the, the Yeti. Although the Yeti had uh, stereo capabilities, uh, this does not. This cost me... Okay, folks, get this Samson Meteor mic for only $729.95. No ups, no extras. Plus, free shipping. Just PayPal me today at DickleFLocket at Yahoo.com. That's DickleFLocket at Yahoo.com. Thank you very much. I think it was $69. Oh, my God. So it's priced well for somebody uh, who doesn't want to spend a lot of money like me. Cheap bastard. And it doesn't take up so much room. Look how big that thing is compared to it. And it's got this big stand on it. And this thing weighs over two pounds. Well, that's less than a half a pound there. So there you go. The Samson Meteor Mic. USB studio microphone for computer recording. That's what it says on the box.
gonna start off with one of these styluses. Is that the plural of stylus? Styluses or styli? Styli? Who knows? I bet John from Arkansas would know. <laughs> anyway, this one is tapered here, so maybe if I just uh, sand this down. See if that works. It's turning. All right, that works. It works. But the problem here is the ones underneath. It's not going to fit in there because its uh, diameter is too big. I also have these. Let me see what these uh, can do here. What is it? What are these things? These are for knitting needles. Needles? Ladies and gentlemen, Buzz sucks. Alright, we're going to use this one. This is a little bit more harder material. How hard could it be? Really kind of tight in there. I think the smaller one is going to work on here. In fact, let me just chop that off. Come on, speed it up. This is working, but <laughs> this hook here is. Clip that off. Oh yeah. I haven't got time for this Mickey Mouse bullshit. Yep. All right. Got the uh, four screwdrivers. I wish this material was a little bit stronger, but uh, I can always file them down when I need to. So there you go. Making your own IF screwdrivers. Fun stuff, huh? Yeah, sure. Well, here's the cabinet after its bath. Now we're gonna do this side first. You can see the uh, the big crack in here. Now the first thing I do, and I say the first thing I do because see, I'm not a teacher here. If you can get a few pointers while I'm doing this, fine. Uh, I'm just a stupid dope, so if you get a few ideas, then use your brain and you can do a lot better. Boy, are you stupid! This is the way I've been doing it. Nobody taught me, I just did it. I'm sure you could come up with something better, but this is strictly the old Buzz's way of doing things. As you people out there know, Buzz is fake, 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 just like CNN. He's a faker. No. This has got to be repaired first, and then I use super glue for the initial uh, repair on there. So I just spread the crack out so I can put super glue on it. And don't be stingy, baby. Don't be stingy on it. Okay, now, watch carefully. That's going to glue that up real good. Now after this dries, We'll do the other side here with this other crack here. You can see the uh, the wash took uh, whatever shine was on that Bakelite and it's now a dull finish here. Again I'll just uh, spread this. Press it together. You can take off that excess if you want. Yeah, that is Bakelite. I wasn't quite sure if that was Bakelite or that other material, but uh, that's definitely Bakelite. Stinks. We'll do the other side too. All 
All right. I'm supposed to breathe in that dust there. It's got the formaldehyde on there. The same stuff that they embalm bodies with, so you don't want that in your lungs. All right, here's the uh, fiberglass. Uh, they call it fiberglass resin jelly from Bondo. I haven't used this in about three years, so I hope it's okay. In fact, that's probably too much. It comes with a hardener. Oops, needs to be needed. When it's been setting around a while, it needs to be kneaded like this. And I'd rather use more hardener than less. Get a nice brownish tinge to it. I'm going to put some here first. There's no neat way of doing this. At least I haven't figured it out. Alright, I've got a patch here somewhere. And you just stick some of this on top of that. Not pretty, is it? But it's not going to show. It'll be inside. It's starting to get hard now. So, that repair is complete on the inside. When that dries, that'll be very strong and it should not uh, crack anymore. Unless you dropped it. Okay, I've mixed another batch. Sorry about the angle, like... I can't see! I can't see! It's just, uh... The camera's awkward. Instead of using the fiberglass mat, I'm using this metal screen. This way this uh, will come out and there'll be a surface for the other side to uh, have Bondo on that side. See what I mean? I'm going to fill all the holes up on the screen. I'm trying to get it all in one coat. Sometimes it's hard if it keeps moving, but you can do it with two coats. I just don't want to. Alright, see now we have a surface to put uh, the regular Bondo on here and sand it smooth. Old 64 Gold is the real expert on Bondo. He's got like 800 pounds on his wife's van. So. Say what? If you got any Bondo questions, just ask the goat. That should just about do it for today's episode. Hope it wasn't too boring for you guys. So until next time, this is Buzz. Have a good one. And what the hell is that smell? Remember folks, that's only $729.95. Send payment to Dickel F. Lockett at yahoo.com. <laughs>